From John Cena to Roman Reigns, WWE has had their fair share of wrestling Superman. You know, Superman. More powerful than a locomotive, the invulnerable alien from the planet Krypton, but is that necessarily a good thing? After all, wrestlers are human, flesh and blood, and perhaps that's the exact note that WWE needs to be playing, since it might just be the missing ingredient to WWE's main event players, as well as being the topic of this episode. Because today, Dave knows vulnerability. Being vulnerable is a tricky thing to define for professional wrestling, and it's even harder to execute correctly. However, to give a brief overview, vulnerability is when a wrestler shows that he is not infallible or indestructible. Simple enough, right? Well, what makes this complicated is that there is a fine line between vulnerable and weak, and having a weakness is not necessarily the same thing as being a weak person. For example, the aforementioned Superman does have a weakness to kryptonite, but he is far from being a weak character, since even with that weakness, many would not consider him to be all that vulnerable. Hey, you forgot to say he's vulnerable to magic too. Yes, shame on you. Don't you also have a comic book channel? And what about all the different kinds of kryptonite, huh? Not all of them are bad. I know all that, but all of the details on Superman's weaknesses aren't exactly cogent for the simple analogy that I'm trying to make for this channel, alright? Anyway, back to the lecture at hand. When talking about professional wrestlers, what makes this whole process difficult is that we, the audience, need to see that the wrestler in question has enough exposed susceptibilities in order to be seen as vulnerable, but not so much that they are seen as feeble, because there is a really big difference between the two. So how do we go about figuring all this out? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about why vulnerability is important in the first place. I disagree. There have been numerous wrestlers who were able to find successes on Unstoppable juggernauts. Yeah, it's totally badass. Take Goldberg or the Ultimate Warrior. Yes, take them. Please. Look, some will argue that those particular examples really didn't work all that well to begin with, but even if you think that it did, I still feel it's fair to say that the indestructible model definitely doesn't work for everyone. And in the least, I think we can agree that it's a fairly rare occurrence when it does happen, if at all. Now, Going back to vulnerability, its main value is that it contributes a lot to a character. For example, in so many superhero stories, after we see the hero master his powers, we almost inevitably get to see those powers fail or we see him come across a problem that he just can't solve. Because for story purposes, having a vulnerability makes the story more compelling. Giving a character something to struggle with or something to overcome is what stories are all about. When we watch a movie, it's about the main character trying to solve something and if he does it instantly, well, that really makes for a short and uneventful film. Also, a flawless perfect character is often seen as boring because they have nothing left to conquer. And in which case, looking at overbooked wrestlers, well, that's exactly how many of us feel about them. For example, it doesn't matter who you throw at Brock Lesnar because we just expect him to win all the time after years of seeing him beat just about everyone. As he's easily the favorite going into every match that he's a part of. And after Money in the Bank, He's also somehow the favorite in matches that he's not a part of. However, to further illustrate how tricky this whole vulnerability thing is, it's important to remember that Brock Lesnar, despite all that, has also lost. He was squashed by Goldberg at Survivor Series, he's dropped his titles on more than one occasion, multiple times to Seth Rollins alone, yet just losing by itself isn't enough to make fans feel that he can legitimately struggle with anything. And it's the struggle that's where the real power is for a booker. And that's because when it comes to professional wrestling, the drama, the suspense is what makes fans compelled to watch and hang on every moment. But if the outcome to a wrestling match is already a foregone conclusion in the mind of the viewer, then why would they even bother to watch? An invulnerable wrestler removes our desire to see what's going to happen next because we already feel like we know. And when we're proven right, well, that could be a huge problem. However, that's not all, as there is more to what vulnerability brings to the table. For example, Let's look at Bruce Willis. If you remember, during a time when Stallone and Schwarzenegger ruled the action movie Roost, it was a humble everyman character named John McClane who took audiences by storm and became one of the biggest and best action movie heroes of all time. Because while moviegoers did love their 80s muscle men, there was an instant appeal behind a wise and regular guy just trying to survive. So as relatable as Rambo using gunpowder to create a small explosion inside of his own torso was, fans attached more to John McClane limping and bleeding all around just because of a small piece of glass. Go figure. Now this reminds me, 
Injuries are also a great example of how vulnerability and relatability work. Like when we see a wrestler take a really bad bump or take something that we know just had to hurt. We cringe, we shudder at the mere sight of it. We could just imagine how much pain that must have caused and we can empathize with the wrestler. We also do this with kayfabe pain too, which is why selling is so crucial. If we believe a wrestler's performance and he convincingly portrays pain, then we as an audience can connect with him, even if it's not real. But let's not just look at empathy. How about we look at sympathy, like with Roman Reigns. Once his unfortunate illness was revealed, fans turned around on him, cheering him and continuing to do so even after he returned and announced that he was all better. This made fans care about him so much more than all the titles in the world could ever do. Being vulnerable in real life is what made people care, not indestructible booking. And things really shouldn't have had to come to that, as a lot of fans felt that if they just wrote wrestlers with more complexity instead of just making them win all the time, it would probably do a lot more to get them over. But let's go back to kayfabe vulnerability. Let's look at one of WWE's most successful megastars of all time. Hulk Hogan. Here's a guy who often gets accused of beating everyone and no-selling, so how could he possibly be a good example of vulnerability? Well, he definitely is if you stop to think about it. While Hogan is the immortal one, let's remember that there is a lot that goes on before he hulks up and collects his win, such as how well he can get sympathy from the crowd. Because as far as I'm concerned, he's the best in the business in that department. The Hulkster does this by conveying powerful emotions, because aside from physical vulnerability, there's also emotional vulnerability as well. Just think of how betrayed Hogan was when his friend, Andre the Giant, revealed that he was now aligning with Bobby the Brain Heenan and challenging him to a match for the WWF Championship. And also how hurt the holster was when Andre ripped his chain off. Or when The Undertaker did the exact same thing. And what about when Earthquake sat on Hogan crushing his body, or when King Kong Bundy used his massive weight to break his ribs? Not to mention, of course, Hogan's reaction to losing his friend, the Macho Man, when the Mega Powers exploded. Or how betrayed he was when Sin Justice turned on him at the Royal Rumble. Or how betrayed he was when Sergeant Slaughter went anti-America. Or when Yokozuna crushed his body and went anti-American. Huh. Is it just me, or did Hogan have a combination of the same three storylines over and over again? Precisely. You really tend to notice it after you rapid fire his views one after another. Yes, but that's not the point. Hogan was the master at showcasing emotional vulnerability to the audience. This allowed us to sympathize and or empathize with his character, which also got us to root for seeing him overcome his struggles. Yes, this was a very simple formula, but it was a simple formula that got fans so invested that the WWF grew to never before seen heights. And speaking of success, let's examine another majorly successful period of WWF history. The Attitude Era. And what some say is missing from today that was around back then. Because I highly suspect that maybe those who make decisions in WWE have grown too successful for their own good. So much so that they can no longer relate to us, the fans. As I don't think that it's exactly a coincidence that WWE's biggest time period came right after the company itself was at its lowest, most humble, and most vulnerable. Well, there you go. Some thoughts on the power of vulnerability in professional wrestling and why a lack of it might have been what caused some of WWE's pet projects to fail to live up to their potential. But what are some of your favorite examples of how vulnerability played a part in professional wrestling? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to check out my combo channel, Dave Knows Comics. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, Dave Knows.